Welcome back, everybody. So there's a lot of new people to the channel. So in case you're new, welcome. My name is Justin. I did my undergraduate degree in microbiology, my PhD in cell biology. I did a postdoc at Harvard Medical School, and now I work in industry. I've been all over the place. I've seen a lot of different things in the scientific realm. And now I'm trying to you know, give some of my personal experience back to you guys as you make your journeys through grad school and your postdoc, trying to help you find your way, trying to make the best of your situation and try to really push your careers forward. So if you don't mind, smash the thumbs up button if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. I know a lot of you watching aren't subscribed, but you keep coming back for more. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos that we put out. And with that, let's get into today's video. What we're gonna be talking about is how do you talk to your family and friends about your research, about your uh, experience in grad school and postdoc? How do you help them to understand what it is that you're going through? Because if you're anything like me, your close friends and your family, they went to maybe undergrad and then that's it. They don't know what it's like going through grad school. They've never done scientific research. They've obviously never done a postdoc. So all of this is new to them, right? So as you're learning, you need to help them learn. So the common thread that I'm going to be talking about here is making things simple. So there's an acronym KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, -S, means keep it simple, stupid. Means don't over complicate things. Keep it really, really simple. And that's gonna be your best friend in trying to explain all of this to your friends and family. So let's start with how to describe your research and then we'll talk about grad school and then we'll talk about a postdoc. So when you're talking about your research, what you cannot do, especially when it comes to your research more than anything else, is get into the weeds, okay? More than likely they don't have a scientific background. So you can't be talking about this complex cell signaling. You can't be talking about this interaction. What you need to do is try to find big common pictures. So I study this kind of cancer. I study hepatocell, you know, HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma. I study the effects of insulin in the body. I study circadian rhythm. Keep it really simple. Then if they ask follow-up questions about what it is that you study, you can get into it. So I study circadian rhythm. Oh, that's really cool. Like, so you study how people sleep and how they stay up? No, what I study is how X, Y, or Z changes in the body over time as we're, you know, awake and sleeping and how that plays into our metabolic health, right? Something like this. You can give follow-ups afterwards, but always start very simply. The other thing is always be careful how you frame things, okay? Don't try to oversell it. Don't try to make it seem like you're, you know, a world-class expert at everything. Like you're obviously studying a narrow field as all of us do, you know, make sure that you stay within that lane. And as you move forward, you'll have to start talking about what you do in grad school. So there's a lot of common misconceptions you're gonna hear about grad school. So a lot of it is like, well, you know, you're really just a student. So can't you just get like a job after work to help pay for everything? No, they don't understand that grad school is like a full-time job and you're gonna be working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, okay? Oh, so you know, you, you, you're in grad school, but you don't take class? Like, how does that work? Again, they don't understand that you probably just take classes for the first year, maybe two, and then afterwards you have your quals or prelims or, or however your department does it. And then from there, you're just doing research once you're all but dissertation. Um, you know, they don't understand why you have to go into the lab on the weekends or maybe why you have to stay late, um, why this has impacted your dating life or your relationship with friends. They don't understand all of this. So you need to keep it really simple. Okay, this is what it means to go to grad school. I take classes for the first couple of years, and then I have to take a big test. And this test determines whether or not I'm qualified to continue on and get my PhD. 
And after I do this test, what I'm gonna be doing is doing research in a lab on blank, whatever it was that you explained to them. And then I'm going to write a dissertation on it. And then there's a lot of other things that go into it, right? So I maybe have to work as a teaching assistant and I have to teach, you know, undergrad classes, or I have to go to these different conferences. And so I have to travel around the country. You know, there's a lot of papers that I have to read, which is why I have a stack of papers up to the ceiling. You know, you could break it down really simple and help them to understand because you got to remember, unless you've gone through grad school, your experience with school is strictly like what you had in undergrad. It's you would take X amount of credits, you do classes X, Y, and Z. If you get a good grade, then you could pass and, and move on, right? So it's really easy to say, okay, if I take my 12 credits a semester or 15 credits a semester, whatever it is, you know, then at the end of four years, I'll have enough to graduate. There isn't this, when will you graduate? I don't know. It depends when my PI and my committee are going to let me graduate. You know, that kind of thing doesn't exist in undergrad. They don't under, they can't wrap their mind around what that means. How can you not know when you're going to be graduating? Um, you know, how could classes not be that important? Well, because, you know, in your PhD, you basically study hard and you do well. And if you don't, you know, they, they kick you out. And so it's not really about getting straight A's. It's about how can I maintain the GPA that I need to stay in the program. And what's more important is getting my research done and publishing. And that's what's gonna get me a position as a, as a postdoc. And then that's the next one is explaining what is a postdoc. So actually with my family, what I found was that explaining my research was hard at first because what I tried to do was over explain. I tried to go too in depth in what it was that I was doing. And once I realized that that wasn't helping and I dialed it back a little bit, then I could see the wheels turning and like, okay, they understand kind of what it is that I'm researching. When it came to grad school, it was a lot easier to explain because as I was learning it, I was also explaining to them, okay, like, yeah, there isn't a set time course that you're in grad school. And this is what a qualifying exam is. And this is like what it takes to write a dissertation, you know, those kinds of things as I learned them was able to communicate those back to my family and it made it a little bit easier. The one that really I had a hard time with with my family and with other friends and when my parents, you know, maybe tried to explain it to their friends was what a postdoc is. And the reason that it was really hard is because there you're not in grad school anymore so you're not really a student, but you're not really working full time. It's a transient position. And it's not a thing that is um, something that someone's familiar with. You're not a scientist or you're not a professor. You're kind of this like weird in-between stage. And what I found worked well is explaining that it was sort of like residency for doctors, except it's for scientists. So it's the same thing. It's like being a scientist in training. You work underneath a professor and you train how to be a scientist. That was the best way that I could explain it. Um, but there'll be a lot of questions about like, well, you have this degree, why are you only making $40,000 a year? Actually, I think that the NIH minimum is higher than that. It's like 50 some thousand, but still like, why are you like making no money? Um, if you're like in this in-between position, why are you working a hundred hours a week? There's, there's all these kinds of questions that you're going to have to fill in, but again, just keep it simple. You walk them through, okay, I, I have my degree. And basically what a PhD degree means is that I've learned how to work the scientific method to answer a scientific question. But now what I'm gonna do is under the supervision of a different professor is I'm gonna learn to perfect it. I'm gonna learn how to address a new question and use these new skills that I've developed to answer something new, publish something new, get some funding to be able to start my own lab or you know after i've developed these skills out a little bit more i'll move over to industry or maybe i'll go work for the government you know in like the fda or something um this is kind of what you need to do to explain to them but i definitely have found that the postdoc was the hardest one to explain but again i think that if you just explain it as like it's sort of like how a doctor after medical school goes to residency it's the same thing a scientist has to go through a postdoc and it's just 
a supervised period of research is what it is. And if you could explain it that way and break it down, I think you'll have a little bit better of a time. So I kind of hope this helps a little bit. I mean, if you have any questions about any of this, make sure to leave it down in the comment section below. I know that this was something that I struggled with for a while through most of the time that I was working until I finally moved and became a scientist in industry. And even now, they still don't quite know what it is that I do as a scientist, but at least they have an idea of like, I'm a scientist. And that's a little bit easier to explain to people. Um, again, if there's any other video suggestions, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video with all the new subscribers is I really enjoy answering viewer um, questions that come in the comment section. So either if I'll answer them in the comment section or if it's something that I think is worth a video, I'll make a whole video on it. So make sure to always leave any of your questions in the comment section below. With that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.